In 2020, something interesting happened. The majority of us were forced inside due to the pandemic. And in this like weird space of uncertainty, I think thousands or maybe millions of people discovered a door they never knew even existed within themselves. The door to being a creator. People can tune in with foresight, hindsight. The creator economy, I would say, is one of the most competitive industries in the world and has I think it has like the lowest and easiest barrier to entry. Anyone with a phone and an idea can join today. And I cannot think of another industry. Tell me if you know one where a, let's say like a 15 year old girl with zero experience can hop on social media today, lay in her bed, tell a couple stories and within six months start outperforming creatives who have like 15 years experience in production and marketing. It's wild, right? So this makes it extremely competitive and even volatile in many ways. So the question is, how do we step into the top 1% of standout creators in 2025? I'm going to share my personal blueprint. I think about this stuff very intentionally, very deeply. And in the previous years, I've built a following on every platform. I've done campaigns for IG. I was uh, one of the first hosts on TikTok radio on Sirius XM. I produced a VR, beautiful VR experience for Meta and YouTube named me one of uh, 2023's top black creators, sent us out to Kenya, gave us a grant, a bunch of fun stuff. But I only mentioned this to like show some of the doubters and the haters who just clicked on the video. I know a thing or two how to stand out when I need to, but even with like the success and like the, the platforms I've built, I'm still very much in a similar position as somebody who's like almost brand new. So how can we build something strong in an industry that's rapidly changing? And how can we stand out when there is a lot of great creators now and rise above the sea of digital noise? There's a lot of junk as well. So this is my blueprint to become a top 1% standout creator in 2025. Standout creators, I believe, will identify and fill the voids. What do I mean by that? Trends are flashy but they rush by like a river. You can catch a few, but the best creators have a longer lasting strategy. We identify voids and then we fill them. We have a culture online because of TikTok as well, where people just copy the high performing pieces of content they already see, ride on that wave, which works, but it doesn't give you the tools to be a standout creator and have longevity in my opinion. You're going to need original ideas. Here's a question that I think you should visit often. What is missing right now? And do I have the curiosity, interest and skills to fill it? What is missing? And am I equipped to fill that void? Seven years ago, when I first got on YouTube, I noticed social media was really just full of like prank videos and like a lot of chaotic stuff, at least what was coming on my algorithm. Everything was over glamorized. Millennials were showcasing only the highlight reel of their lives, often bending reality to make it seem like it was better than it was. I couldn't find what I wanted to see. And I personally wanted something a little bit more peaceful. You understand? Calm with a mix of artistry. I couldn't find it. So I realized I wanted to bring balance to the algorithms. So I was like, let me be the yin to the yang. So I produced slower, more intentional, meaningful types of content, simple titles, less edits. And over time it blew up instead of talking about how much money one makes. I highlighted the little moments within my day, like my cup of tea. And I simply, again, just sat down with minimal edits, my cup of tea, and I had a calm chat and it was exactly what a lot of people needed. I brought balance and I filled a void. Top creators don't need to chase trends. They follow curiosity and in doing so, they create trends. You could ride a trend on TikTok, get 3 million views and less than 0.5% of those people will even follow you or check your page for more. Why? Because they have seen this before. You're just a different face doing the same thing. There's no fear of missing out intuitively. They know if they swipe, they'll come across something like this again. You have to create content so good. 
that they come back for dessert. You have to create content so good that people get the fear of missing out. Craft it like a signature dish. Think of your content, think of what you are making as like a chef curating a unique dish that is distinct to them. And every post, every expression, every story you share is your flavor, is your touch, and is a glimpse into your world that can't be replicated because you're creating a world. You're not just making content, you're creating a world. And when your content becomes a signature dish, people keep coming back for the taste only you can serve. The ingredients may be similar, the topics may be similar, but what you do with those ingredients and the final presentation is in your signature, your message, your delivery, the way you speak, your aesthetic, your colors, your font, your voice, your journey, your story. Every ingredient matters, but what matters most is how you bring it all together. Think of that girl, Nara Smith. She nailed absolutely nailed her signature dish beautiful woman lower calm sugar and egg and then letting that go until it all comes together kind of raspy voice that guides the viewer through like a homemade from scratch meal that 97 percent of people would never attempt like this girl's creating her own flower while wearing like a beautiful piece of fashion you would see on the runway when you're swiping on the algorithm it stops you in your tracks She's entertaining, she inspires, and she's educating people. And she tickles the senses, right? It looks good, it feels good, it almost looks as if you can smell the food through the screen. Top creators will create experiences, not content. Information now is abundant. And at this point, it's really redundant, right? Like everyone's kind of saying the same thing. So it really comes down to how you deliver it through your own unique lens and how you create an experience. Top creators will be consistent in experiences, not uploads. Don't just post, immerse your audience in a world that only you can create. What is an experience? I actually think I'm like one of the best at doing this, but hmm. black tea for the win. But my podcast, for example, was an experience. Every day, Monday to Friday, a short form podcast Nobody was really doing short form podcasts at the time. And people would grab their cup of tea, their coffee, and they would listen intentionally, but it was immersive. People would share in their stories how they're going for a walk. They're meeting up with their friends at a picnic, listening to the podcast. They would set up their bedroom in a nice little vibe, turn on the podcast and be journaling. It became an immersive experience for them because of the intention I put into it and the structure I laid out for them. There were no ads. I sold nothing on it no interruptions. It was easy to digest. It was relatable. And it became a part of their routine, just like their morning coffee or tea. They could expect it there every day, Monday to Friday. There's this other guy on YouTube. He does like a Sunday deep cleaning DJ session on YouTube. So on Sundays, he's playing his mix and the audience cleans their home, deep cleans their home. And I actually love this because when your content becomes a ritual, it becomes a part of somebody's life and that's where true connection lies it's a genius concept and the beautiful thing about this is the algorithm doesn't have to push the video to his viewers every sunday you know why it's part of their routine they expect it they go to his page on sundays it's an experience information is abundant now but an experience is a one-on-one -on -one. your world your experience should be so unique to you People know when someone has copied you. They're like, oh, that's this person copied them because, it's, you know, they know you are the innovator and the rest are carbon copies. And if people never copy your idea, I'm going to be honest, your ideas may not be good enough. Being copied is proof you've crafted something worth remembering. Innovation always starts with bold originality. The top 1% standout creators influence the influencers. They set the tone. They set the direction of discussion. They bring a new aesthetic. Everyone hops on that aesthetic. I have a video titled content creation is a new nine to five. And that video did very well. And after that video, a lot of creators hopped on that idea. 
Should I be upset? No, it was a great idea. Great ideas get copied and remixed as they should. If all you do is the copying, then how do you expect to truly stand out? Surface level efforts deserve shallow rewards. So you need to experiment more, have courage, identify the voids. What is missing? Everyone is talking about this thing. Everyone is going in this direction. Where is the void? Where can I be a pioneer in a new angle, in a new corner on the internet and become a great observer? Good content starts offline by design. The top 1% of creators know how to source ideas offline. They live deep, intentional lives, right? They're capturing ideas from their own experiences, observations, they're living their life and then bringing them online in a digestible, beautiful way for their audience to resonate with. Think about this, like ancient philosophers, their words are still studied to this day. Why? Because they were able to tap into timeless wisdom and deliver it in a beautiful way. They spent time alone. They went deep in thought. They were focused. They were disciplined. Top creators will do the same. They prioritize downtime. They go for a swim. They go to the gym. They do daily walks. They do their meditation, whatever works for them. Go for a coffee with an old friend or a stranger and have beautiful conversations. There are ideas everywhere, not just on your feed. When you're in a long lineup at the grocery store on a Sunday, leave your phone in the pocket spark a conversation with the person behind you or allow your mind to just be idle. Let the mind present ideas to you and let the mind edit your previous ideas that you're working on in your subconscious because they will. Guaranteed your best ideas are going to come to you when you least expect it. Not when you're searching Google trends and overanalyzing your analytics good content starts offline by design a focused mind is a creative mind and a creative mind produces ideas that are worth copying if your social media feed is your number one source of inspiration and information you're going to drown out in the sea of digital noise because even if it's not intentional you're going to blend into whatever else is happening out there top one percent creators are wise contrarians they are willing to challenge a popular narrative that has become stagnant if everyone is saying one thing find another angle think of the four hour work week by tim ferris now when everyone was programmed to believe that in one week you work 40 hours or more tim ferris comes out and says no the four hour work week is possible and this is how automatically captures your attention contrarian perspective cal newport love cal newport his whole message is get off social media and focus on deep intentional work he's never had a twitter account an instagram account a facebook account very contrarian while everybody battles on the algorithms he prioritizes deep slow intentional work and to be honest somehow produces more content in the form of books and success and exposure the most people get who are in the social media rat race, right? A wise contrarian. For a while, there was like a intense hustle hard. You can even say toxic tone on the internet. And then creators like Alex L and myself came out saying, here's a gentle reminder and offered advice in a more graceful, gentle way. Basically saying to the audience, I see you. I'm not talking at you. I'm talking with you and it resonated with millions. Be a wise contrarian. Don't just be a contrarian for the fact to like rebel against everything when it doesn't make sense. That is stupidity, but have the courage to challenge the status quo and norms. And to be able to do this, you need to develop foresight, study the culture, make predictions on where things are going. Be bold. Top creators, top 1% standout creators are always experimenting and pivoting. They have the courage to go in a direction nobody is going. We live at a time where carbon copy culture is at an all-time high. People just surf YouTube pages, see an outlier, and then repeat that video. 
there's an opportunity right now to truly be unique and come and innovate with some cool ideas. And when you present an idea and it doesn't do well, that that isn't a signal to just quit on that, uh, to quit on that idea. Sometimes it just means that you have to massage that idea into existence because it's a new idea. Standout creators have the resilience and the faith to do this, right? Next, the top 1% of creators know how to hit that sweet spot in 2025. I believe top creators will be able to become like triathlete creators. Now, the sweet spot is where a creator can inspire, educate, and entertain. Doesn't mean every single piece of content has all three elements, but they craft content that fits into those categories. For example, I've been doing this in many different formats, not consistently because I'm not in the top 1% yet, I'm working to get there. It's hard, it's hard. But my podcast is where I focus on emotional impact, right? That's where I inspire meaningful, straight to the point conversations that revolve around our heart posture. And this type of content has allowed me to connect with my audience in a unique way. I've traveled the world. I've been all the way in Kenya, Africa, and have people come up to me in the market, recognize me right away and just thank me. So I believe in 2025, creators who can craft deep emotional experiences that an audience can feel something powerful, whether joy, reflection, awe, nostalgia, whatever it may be, something that sticks. Emotional resonance is more timeless than like a hot selfie, of course, or a gossip hot take. Creating that emotional connection, I believe, gives creators more longevity. A viewer will be going through a rough time and they won't even need the algorithm to recommend your video because they're going to think back to that time. Oh, Sarah, the creator. Man, last time she really lifted my spirit with her storytelling. I relate to her so much and they'll just come and seek you. And this just takes a little bit of vulnerability and being bold. A lot of people are afraid to lean into emotional impact content because they're afraid of being preachy or corny or they lack the confidence to have the authority on whatever they're speaking on. So the ones who can get out of their own way, because that's all it is, get out your own way and make that emotional connection through your own experiences and to share unique stories that can have a lasting impact, right? And then have some content where you entertain. For me on Instagram, that's what I'll be doing. So that's where I'm going to explore some of my music production, um, my love for tea, maybe some like home lifestyle stuff, whatever it may be. And I, I kind of want to unlock a little bit of my comedic side, which I've been trying to do. So we'll see if that happens in 2025. And then next, you know, educate. We all have something to teach but entertain, inspire, and educate. If you can do all three, you enter the sweet spot. Now, this is a long video. I hope you got your notes. <laughs> I hope you got your notes, but it's important we stand out, okay? Next top creators are going to have a good long form game. This is YouTube, podcast, anything in the long form, short form, IG, TikTok, whatever that may be, written. So that's gonna be threads, um, X, you know, newsletters. And then the cherry on top is live streaming. They're going to become creative triathletes. Now, this is not for everybody, and I don't recommend it for everybody. It requires more work, more deep thought, more practice, more failure. Might require a small team. It's just harder. But we're talking about being in the top 1% of standout creators. And to be in the top 1%, it requires extraordinary effort, especially in an industry that is so competitive. I don't know about you, but go online. There's a lot of amazing creators. So how are you going to rise above all of that? You don't have to master it all at once either. You can focus on different platforms until you find your rhythm and then build a cohesive system that pours into all your channels. I've designed many and I will be sharing them in the future. So just sign up to my newsletter. I'll share that later. But I often, I often like tour platforms. Sometimes you'll only see me active on one platform for a while until I find my rhythm, find that sweet spot, and then I'll start to integrate the other platforms into my system. So experiment with each one until you discover a winning format and repeat. Again, Nara Smith has a winning format 
and she delivers it consistently and she brings in slightly different pieces of content experimenting, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single day. But constant experimentation is necessary as a winning format in like 2024, it may become redundant and boring in 2025. And this is how you know if it's coming to an end. If you start to get bored making it, most likely the audience is right behind you. This is why top 1% of creators in 2025 will be deeply dedicated to their craft and enjoy the process. If you're turning out content every day because you just feel like you have to, you will never be able to compete with people who are genuinely passionate and love what they do. Doesn't mean they love every single moment, but overall, they're, they're consumed by it. Because you will have to exert all of your energy for discipline while their curiosity and excitement becomes their main driving force. So create what you want to see online, what you want to see in the world. Like Rick Rubin says, the audience comes last. I believe in that. I know some people say the audience comes first. Sorry, I believe the audience comes last. I'm going to do a whole video on that topic. So subscribe, stay tuned. But I believe as a top 1% creator, you should be able to lead your audience. They have no idea what is within you. When it's time to experiment, you need to develop something new and go deep within your own experiences, your skill set, and deliver it. An artist goes into the studio and makes an album and then presents it to the world. Maybe, possibly, they'll tease a few snippets here and there because they're excited. They want to test the market a little bit but they're not in the studio asking their audience for permission to experiment with a new genre. Too many creators are way too afraid to leave their niche or to go in another direction because they fear the audience is going to like it. If they don't like it, who cares? A new audience will have the courage. Just do it. Make sure you create from a place that genuinely sparks your curiosity or else you will drown in the sea, a digital, noise because a lot of people are making things because they think they just have to or they think that's what the algorithm wants from them be a leader top one percent of creators are going to create their own worlds their own ecosystems top creators build worlds not just content because followers are fragile it's basically a vanity metric at this point Someone with 1,000 followers can get the same engagement as someone with a million followers. It really comes down to the idea. And top creators are not going to be owned by their audience or the algorithm. They will have their own products, digital, physical. They'll have their own private communities. They'll have partnerships. They may be a brand ambassador on top of all of that. They're going to have their newsletters, you know, a direct communication to their audience, to their tribes, and even bring experiences to people offline like in-person talks so they're bridging multiple gaps and all roads point back to their world this is all a part of world building that's why i like to call it world building and it takes time but the time to start is actually now one of my favorite creators is tyler the creator for the world he's built and he just dropped a new album Visual, visuals are fire i just love it when tyler drops because it's just an experience everything is cohesive when it comes down to the colors the patterns the vibe he's got the merch the fashion line the suitcases his own festival you know the production the films everything it's a world that you step into and every corner and every angle you look at feels uniquely like him it is impossible to copy him and do it as good as him because it's Tyler the Creator has captured his signature dish. So I always tell creators, don't wait until you have a following to start thinking about how to build this world. Have it ready for when they discover you. Build out your products as you go because you're going to fail a few times before anyways. So you might as well get that process going. For me, I had a reverse engineer. I kind of like had a big growth spurt online, wasn't expecting it. And then I had to like, I've been figuring out what to do with my audiences ever since. So learn from my mistakes, build your ecosystem, get your website in place, get your products in place, 
and create your own world. And if you do need a place to sell the products and content all on your own terms in your own way, then our sponsor of the day Squarespace may just be the right fit for you. Let me explain a couple of their offers. Now, Squarespace does make it easy to build out your own world with really minimal skills required. Like I can build out my own website and run my business. It's quite actually amazing because having employees is expensive. Now they have new features that I want to share with you. First being the design intelligence from Squarespace. It's a powerful blend of two decades of industry leading design expertise and cutting edge AI technology, unlocking your strongest creative potential. Design intelligence helps you build a website that's not only beautiful, but truly personalized to your brand, helping you create a digital identity to use across your whole entire online presence world building. Also managing payments has never been simpler with Squarespace payments. Onboarding is quick and you can start receiving payments in just a few clicks. Plus you'll offer your customers popular payments like Klarna, Apple Pay and more all seamlessly integrated. And if you're ready to elevate your online presence, check out Blueprint AI. This is the latest AI enhanced website builder from Squarespace. After just a few questions, Blueprint AI crafts a fully custom on-brand website for your business, complete with curated premium quality content matched to your style. You could literally do this all by yourself. So like I said in our video, build your world now. So if you're ready to take your online presence to the next level, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Heinz and receive 10% off your first purchase. Top 1% creators are going to be so good. They talk about you. This is the magic sauce. Imagine not having to rely just on the algorithm, but your content, your world, your experiences resonate so much. People share it with their friends, with their coworkers, in their WhatsApp groups and Reddit forums. This is how you spread like wildfire. To be honest, I'm gonna bring it back to my podcast. I'm not trying to gloat, but I just love how the podcast grew. It has 10 million downloads plus, no guests, no marketing. It grew because people shared it. They loved it. They told their best friend. I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but it just spread like wildfire. So you need to become obsessed with your craft, master your craft, become a better speaker, enhance your lighting, become a better writer, challenge yourself, do more collaborations, learn from other people. If you do not want to be the best, you might as well quit, unless if it's just a hobby. But if you are actually trying to like make a career out of this, why would you not try to be the best? Try to be the best. Even if you fall short, at least you still try to be the best. Be so good they can't ignore you. Become obsessed with your craft or else drown out in the sea of digital noise. The noise is average. The noise is stagnant. You don't want to be there. Now, the last one I want to talk about, top creators will be able to master the element of surprise and absence. They will be able to deliver consistent value over and over and also dish in an element of surprise. I remember when Matt Diavella was posting a really good YouTube video every single week and then out of nowhere, boom, dropped a minimalism documentary on Netflix. Diary of a CEO recently just did a format pivot. And instead of interviewing one expert, he had three experts on to debate a topic. When I saw this, I actually instantly clicked on it because I'm like, oh, this sparks my curiosity because it was different. If he just uploaded a regular video, I would have swiped by. If it caught my interest, maybe watch later. Another creator, Vanessa Lau, disappeared for a year. She was absent, came back, documenting her journey in a new way and, launch, and launches her own beverage drink. These elements of surprise while producing relatable content lets the viewer know you're somebody to like watch out for. You know, you always got something cooking behind the scenes. And top creators, no one to take a break and step back. They're in tune with themselves. They allow the audience to miss them. Trust me, you're not making good enough content. If you stop making content and nobody hits you up like, hey, where have you been? You haven't made a real impact with your audience yet. Top creators in 2025 will understand this rhythm. Even top musicians do this. They know when to step out of the spotlight for a moment 
just long enough to let the tension build, make the audience miss them, and then boom, come back with something fresh and beautiful to offer. And it's like reuniting with a, a long a long lost love, you understand? Top creators will have the courage to do this because they won't be owned by the algorithm. They can take a break and have the faith that when they come back, they're delivering something fresh with a new perspective and their audience will be waiting for them. Mainly because they built their own world, their own ecosystem as well. So they don't even need the algorithm like that. They're in communication with their audience already.